You're watching Understanding Bigfoot. Why understand Bigfoot? Because we know they're real. Now, let's start Understanding Bigfoot with your host, Mike Scott. Okay, thank you, Sean Sable. I'm Mike Scott with you. Another episode of Understanding Bigfoot coming to you from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Uh, with me, of course, tonight, Becky Pepper, um, our co-host. Uh, Becky, good to see you. We've got good to uh, see you too. A, a great guest uh, tonight, uh, Troy Hager. Uh, lives up in the Omaha, Nebraska area, and 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 some of his activity over in southwestern Iowa. Troy, welcome to the show. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's nice to be on. Thank you. Welcome, Troy. And thank you. We had a had a, a good time uh, discussing with you in the last uh, couple of weeks uh, in preparation for this program. Susan Perez will not be able to make it tonight. Uh, she's the director of the Facebook page of the. SEMO Bigfoot and Cryptid Research Group. But Becky, uh, last time uh, we did the program with Rick Taylor, yes. we talked about you had having an upcoming birthday, which that has come and gone. Hopefully that went well. Did you have a good birthday? Yes. See my flowers back right. here? So, yeah. Yes, I and, did. I you, had a good birthday. <clears throat> well, that's good. But still not going to mention... Uh, not going to mention no, we're not, how we're not, many. We're not, yeah, I got chastised by a couple of the couple of our a couple of people watched the program. They chastised me for trying to bait you into that. So I, you know, oh my goodness, <laughs> I could take, I, I was saying I could take a scolding and and learn from it. So I'm not going to go there anymore. So um, <laughs> yeah, my kids but, my kids did pretty good for me. My husband did pretty good. They all went in, got me something pretty cool. So. Get to I go tried to bait her into telling her age and and with the upcoming birthday and and Troy she wouldn't do it she didn't take the bait. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know too many gals that do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I almost did though. I, I almost did. But the first person that scolded me on that, who watches the program faithfully, was our aunt Janet. Really? <laughs> yeah. So oh, wow. She, she had your she had your back. Janet had Thank your back. Thank you, so. Aunt Janet. <laughs> I just got a birthday card in the mail from her today. Thank you. Well, well good. So <laughs> any, anyway, um and you just got back from the from the you were in Nebraska this past week. Yes. Uh was I was in Lincoln area, so okay. not too far from Omaha. I was visiting my daughter, son, my oldest daughter, and her husband, and then my son for a couple of days. Yeah. Daughter, daughter, and son-in-law, Brad and Carly, they they live up there, and then son Trey mm -hmm. goes to college up there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, and I'll be back up in that area soon. I'm keeping the road pretty warm, so. Well, I got mo Mom's Day coming up in a couple of weeks, so. And, 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 of course, Becky resides in Nakona, Texas, so that's a little bit of highway driving from yeah, Nakona. Yeah, that's, that's a jump. Lincoln, Lincoln, yeah. Nebraska. So. Getting used to it. Found a nice little spot to stop in Kansas, so um, which is not too far out. And a neat little town called Concordia. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's a nice town. You know yeah. about that? It oh, seems yeah. really neat there, and they're, yeah. you know near the Republican River and so it's just scenery is pretty pretty and the downtown is really neat. Concordia, Kansas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it, um, and it you know, it kind of breaks up the trip because it's about a couple hours out outside of Lincoln. Okay. I would have mentioned too um the um you, you know the 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 last show one of the last we did two parts with Rick Taylor. We had Rick Taylor and we did part one and part two. And part two was just uh, released just a couple of days ago. But uh, part one of the f feedback outside of me prying into your age uh, for the for our audience, um, <laughs> on a positive note, um, gentlemen, um, Michael Harrell is a prominent researcher from I believe from up in British Columbia, across the border in, in Canada, very well known. Uh, had some very nice comments on the on the program, and, 
and said he appreciated what we were doing and stuff like that. So I just wanted to give him a shout out and say thanks publicly. Oh, good. I appreciate that from him. Um, because because some of these people that follow us and watch us have, have done this forever and know a whole lot more than what we do. And we're just, you know, we, we're just having fun. So uh, right. I wanted to thank him for those kind words as well. So, and yes. Tom Cantrell also, kind of, he says, he, 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 he said that, that we are the best as far as you, Susan and I. So yes, um, I saw Tom put some well. pretty nice comments on there yes. last time. I noticed that too. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, that being said, let's get right into the program here. Troy, Troy is, um, somebody who is going to tell us about some of his experiences, um, in the area, um, you know, Western, Western Iowa, you know, Iowa is not known as a Bigfoot hotspot across the country. Like some of these other States are, some of these other areas are. Just like we had uh, Barry Webster from from Eastern Nebraska on a couple of weeks ago, same thing mm-hmm. there. But you have food, cover, and water. You're going to find them. And Troy found the first one when he was seven years old. So wow. Troy, we're going to get you started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about that experience when you were seven. Okay. Well, uh, far as uh, who I am, I've, been, I've lived in this area of my whole life. I was born over in Council Bluffs, lived there, uh, worked there, stuff like that. And I was a, after I got off the farm, I worked for the Conservation Commission for a while. I, mostly what I did was uh, in emergency medicine. Uh, I was an EMT, um, did search and rescue. Also, uh, I guess nowadays they call it pub, uh, public safety diver, but back then we called it search and recovery diver. Okay. Uh, anyway, but yeah, back when I was about seven years old, which would have been the early seventies, um, my granddad, just to give you a little bit of background and some of the story ties in with my granddad. So just to give you a little background. My dad was an over the road truck driver. Uh, he wasn't around a lot, nothing against him. That's just the way it was. That's how he supported the family. So my granddad on my mom's side, he stepped up and he more or less became my dad till we lost him when I was about nine years old. Anyway, he was a fa- old time Iowa farmer, taught me how. He's the one who taught me about the woods and stuff, or at least I started to. And uh, by the time I was seven years old, he would let me go down in the timber by myself to camp and stuff. And uh, so this would have been. For that particular year, this would have been probably about my third or fourth trip. It was getting into the fall, so it was sometime, I believe, in September. Anyway, we'd had some rain a few days before, so the ground, the leaf litter was pretty damp. Didn't make a lot of noise and stuff. Um, and uh, I'd gone to bed like I usually did, my normal spot. It was a fairly warm night, so instead of sleeping in a tent, I was actually in a lean-to. And sometime in the middle of the night, I'm guessing, because back then I didn't wear a watch like I do now, but I'm guessing somewhere around 2, 3 in the morning, something woke me up. Just that sixth sense, little voice, whatever you want to call it. And I just startled awake. But one thing that my granddad taught me was, never to panic and of course later on in life that was really drilled into me when i got on the fire department and search and rescue and stuff but anyway and i knew something was there i knew something was watching me and where i was camping there was this gully um uh i don't know probably about 15 20 foot wide and After the initial shock of being woke up the way that I was, um, then my curiosity kicked in. I have this monster curiosity, and my kids, they just hate it because um, most of the stuff they get scared of, I'm trying to go to because I want to see what it is. I, I love a mystery. Anyway, so 
my curiosity started kicking in. And like I said, I didn't know if it was a predator. I didn't know what it was. So I'm just scanning, trying to figure it out. And I clue in on these bunch of trees on the other side of this gully. And um, I'm just watching, sitting there watching. I'm not scared anymore. Now, my, like I said, my curiosity's kicked in. I'm setting up on one knee. And uh, uh, I did have a hunting knife with me, but I didn't draw it. I didn't do anything aggressive. And I'm pretty sure that me and the Bigfoot were probably looking at each other. Although he was probably seeing me a lot better than I was seeing him. <laughs> but anyway, um, we uh, um, it felt like forever. Uh, but in all reality, it was probably at most maybe two, two and a half minutes. And then what I thought was a tree started to move and it was next to a tree <laughs> but um it started to move all i'm seeing is the silhouette now at seven years old i didn't know about bigfoot i mean obviously patterson gimlin has been out you've seen a few of these you go back and look at some of the documentaries of the early 70s they were more or less what we call nowadays mockumentaries because they just made fun of right. anybody that believed in Bigfoot. But nonetheless, right. I knew about Bigfoot, had some idea about Bigfoot. But as this thing, as this silhouette moved, it moved across in front of this one tree that had a broken branch on it. And that broken spot on the branch where the branch had fallen completely off. It was lighter and because of the moon filtering through the trees i could actually see that it blocked it out and so then it went on down and like i said i could see the silhouette until i lost it completely in the trees and i could see a shoulder and first off there in western iowa we don't have bears haven't had bears for years haven't had cats, and it doesn't, I don't care how big the bear is or anything, it doesn't have a shoulder, at least it's not a human type right. shoulder. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so anyway, so I've seen that, I probably sat there for, uh, I'm guessing 15, 20 minutes, and then the bird started chirping, this squirrel was giving what for to, I don't know if it was me or the bigfoot or something else but anyway all the normal sounds of the timber uh they uh came back i calmed down and i went to sleep because i wasn't going to try to make it back up to the house through the timber in the middle of the night um so then next day comes go up to the house my dad is actually there that weekend it was one of the weekends that he was home so he was there, Grandpa was there, um, my two cousins, and my uncle was there. And, of course, I was just all excited. And I'm telling them what had happened. <laughs> and my dad, my uncle, and my two cousins, they started laughing at me. And everything else, you know, and I just, I mean, I'm this seven-year-old, I'm just totally deflated you know i mean they, they don't believe me you know um i don't know really what they thought they didn't like try to pass it off as some other animal or anything they, they were just laughing at me like i had so, made up a story or something so what did you tell them troy did you did you i basically i told them basically um i told them what i just told you guys um right. of course back then i was fresh in my mind so i probably gave them a lot more detail <laughs> Because, um, like I said, I was seven, and so that was, oh, shoot, I just turned 58, so that was over, that was 51 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you told but, them what uh, you saw, and didn't even... But yeah, I told, I told them what I saw. What you saw, and they're like, you yeah. didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I saw the silhouette. I seen the, you know, right. and I didn't really call it Bigfoot. I just said, 
it, this, this thing was there and it was that's what was i was gonna massive. ask if you, yeah it was just you massive. referred to it as big yeah when you, yeah i just i just said it was it was massive you know and it, it was just just really really big now my granddad through this whole thing he hasn't really said anything and after the other guys kind of wandered off to do whatever my granddad he pulls me aside puts his arm around my shoulder he goes tell me the story again so i told grandpa and i'm waiting for him to start laughing at me he goes let's go take a walk and we start down in to the timber walking down there and he goes i'm going to tell you something he goes i got laughed at by my two sons which would have been the one uncle that was there and then his other um his other son who didn't live on the farm uh at that time he had his own farm um i guess they laughed at him too because um that was when my granddad told me he'd seen him um and as we talked about mike um Back in the 30s and 40s, Granddad farmed what was what we called the bottomland. That was before Interstate 29 went in. So all the land between the bluffs and the Missouri River back in those days, that was farmland. So, um, and Granddad, um, he said you could see them any time of the year. They mostly stayed by the river. And within about, he said, he guessed about 10 to 15 miles. Of course, wasn't nearly as populated back then as it is now. But he said they pretty much followed the river. You could see them mostly in the spring and the fall. So they kind of migrated or whatever. I don't know what they were following or whatever. But he too had seen them. But none of the kids did. And so... I don't know if they just didn't believe him or what, but anyway, but he believed me. We went down there. We went down there. He always carried a tape measure in his pocket of his bib overalls. I could take him to that tree. We measured it, and that was about 10 feet tall, so this thing was roughly 10 or 11 feet tall. We did find, because it was damp and there was a lot of leaf litter, we didn't find any tracks as far as anything discernible but we did find some impressions right definitely bipedal strides and he goes well there it is he goes the big guys are still around i'm glad to see it and that's what cool. he told me wow and hey, uh, and what's that and that's why and that's why we are interested in understanding bigfoot Boy, we hear that so many times, Troy. Where where you, you that initial story? It, it, you, you find it, you know, the people closest to you, when you start sharing things with them, they they're in disbelief. They they, it's almost like they're like you didn't see what you saw, and they know that you didn't see what you saw, and then Grandpa pulls you aside and says, "Eh, I got the same kind of stuff too." That's that's that's, that's good that you had somebody like that, especially at the age of seven. Yeah, like I said, my granddad, um, me and him, we were really, we were really tight. So, yeah, yeah and, it, and it, uh, it started me on a road. While I'm not a hardcore researcher right. like some of these people, although I'm starting to take it a little bit more seriously, um, I have to admit, every time I go in the timber, it doesn't matter what the timber is doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm always looking for sign and stuff like that. And like so many people say, first off, it never scared me out of the woods. In fact, if anything, it, it, it pushed me into the woods even more. Um, but uh, it, it's so true what people say is when you encounter one of these uh, beings and you know regardless of whether it's like me kind of sucks you in or pulls you out no matter what 
I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't think about it. Or there was another time up in Montana, which you and I have talked about, Mike. Uh, but there, there's not a day that goes by that it doesn't cross my mind one or both of those experiences. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, it's just fascinating, though. <laughs> I think it's really neat that you have that uh, with your you know, the memory with your grandpa too, that you shared well, that and that your grandpa shared what he did with you. That's yeah. Special. Yeah. Like I said, like I was saying, uh, he's seen him going out of his field into the woods. Uh, at least was the one time he told me about, I mean, sounds like he's seen him more than one time, but he only really told me about the one time and, uh, he was able, and it was actually a family. It was, he's seen three of them different heights because of where he went where they went in kind of like in my experience there was this one tree with this overhanging branch like i said he always carried a ma uh, tape measure or uh back then it was those folding wooden ones but anyway he was able to figure out that the biggest one probably the male was around 12 feet tall and then was guesstimated that uh the next one, which we're guessing was a female, we, he never said for sure. I don't think he even knew or probably even cared. He just said that the biggest one was 12 feet. He guessed that the uh, the uh, next one was probably somewhere between 9 and 10. And then the uh, smallest one was somewhere around, uh, was somewhere around 6 That's to 8. 12, 12 foot. So is wow. consistent with everything that I have heard on the uh, adult male height in the Midwest. Uh, I know Missouri, same thing. I had a, a picture uh, that was previously on Google Earth of one that was about 12 foot tall. I uh, still have it on my phone. But um, so what about how old were you with the Montana experience? The Montana one... Um... Would have been about seven or eight years later. It would have been when I was about 14, 15 years old. Because uh, I, I really cannot remember, to be honest with you, if it was the first trip or the second trip to Montana. But I took two trips consecutively. First one when I was 14, second one when I was 15. But in either case, um, what happened up there was... Um, We'd gone up to a place called Mystic Lake. We'd actually gone past Mystic Lake. Uh, we'd camped out for a week in between the highest lake, which was a lake called Silver, and a, a kind of a what we called the middle lake, which was Island Lake, because there was an island in there. And we camped out along in a clearing along one of the streams that fed from Silver to Island. Anyway, but where the encounter took place was actually on the last day we were hiking out and we got strung out on the trail and somehow I got separated from the group. I was just walking by myself, just having a good old time. And we got to this one spot where a bunch of game trails converged and up where we were, we were in what was called wilderness territory, which means the trails weren't maintained. They weren't marked. The only thing that maintained them was use. And if they intersected with game trails, well, it was easy to get off onto the wrong ones. And that's what happened with me. I got off onto the wrong one. I realized my mistake when I got down to the water's edge. Uh, down at the uh, one in, at the end of Silver, as it started to dump into some more creeks to go on down and feed into mystic and i'd always been taught um you know once you figure out that you're lost stay where you are if at all possible so i did i started yelling as you might expect trying to get somebody's attention um that wasn't working and i knew a little bit more about bigfoot by then but i wasn't even thinking about bigfoot's up there i mean we had had a bear come into camp actually earlier in the week uh he came for supper uh <laughs> and uh 
Um, but that was fun. Oh yeah, it it was it was interesting. He actually came into camp and literally hung his head over the cook's shoulder as if to say, "What's for supper?" Is, is it a grizzly? And the cook, without thinking, yeah, I'm yeah yeah. It it was a big okay. brown bear, okay. so I'm assuming so, it was a grizzly. Um, but uh, but anyway, uh, fortunately the bear was in a halfway decent mood because the cook without i mean the, all of us we were we were being real quiet and we were moving towards trees because we were going to climb and the cook and the the bear re- literally did he came in he came in quiet on us he snuck up on us i mean those things are quiet i i couldn't believe it but anyway there he was and the cook takes this spoon out of the pot that he was stirring and he literally hits the bear. I don't even think he thought about it. He hits the bear on the nose. Just one of those boop things, you know. The bear runs off, sits on the trail. And he sits there most of the night. We didn't get any sleep. But fortunately, he decided not to tear into us either. <laughs> but anyway, uh, getting back to the Bigfoot encounter. Like I said, um, we're down. I, I'm down there. I'm. You know, and I know a little bit more about Bigfoot, but I still don't know about tree knocks or any of this other stuff. Um, and uh, what I did was I'm trying I'm trying to get somebody's attention so that I can get out of there. So I pick up this pretty stout limb that was laying on the ground, and I start hitting the side of a tree. <laughs> I'm doing a tree knock. <laughs> and uh, then I would yell. And no response, no response. And, of course, up there where we were with the mountains on either side, you would get echoes. So I would bang and I would yell and you'd hear the echo. Well, then all of a sudden. What were you sudden, yelling? Just, hey, help. help you know, okay. the, the normal stuff. Okay. Um, and... Uh, but then all of a sudden, I noticed not the yells, but when I banged the tree. Because when I would bang the tree, I'd only hit it once, maybe twice. And then all of a sudden, I noticed my echo was getting confused. Because all of a sudden, my echo was turning into threes. It was always threes. I don't know. I don't know if that's a Bigfoot thing or what. But huh. I, I would hit the tree, and then. There would be the, my echo, but then all of a sudden, there would be three distinct, distinct knocks all of a sudden. Well, now, I'm forgetting about being rescued. I'm like, my this, like I said, my curiosity always gets the better of me. Three different directions. So I'm like, what is from... that? So I'm looking out across the lake. Where huh? are they coming from three different directions? Like, 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 like you said, the echo. No, no, no. They were all coming from one okay. direction. One. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, the the echo, you know, I could tell the echo, it's just all of a sudden I was getting okay. way more knocks okay. than I should have been. From the same direction. And then I was okay. realizing that those other knocks were echoing as well. So we okay. we had like this little symphony yeah. type, type thing going. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I'm, I started looking out across the lake and I see this patch of trees. Like I said, I'm at the end of the lake. So it's not like I'm looking way, way across the lake, but I am on the other side of the lake. I see this patch of trees, so I hit the, my tree, and then here comes three knocks. And so they're coming from this patch of trees, so I didn't actually see anything. No silhouette, no nothing. But here's these knocks. And then, I don't know how long this went on, where we kind of were playing with each other whatever you want to call it um and to this day i don't know if he the bigfoot was curious i don't know if he realized i needed help and was actually trying to help me or what because obviously his knocks were a lot louder than mine but then all of a sudden this is the one and only time that i heard an actual bigfoot vocalization other than recordings it started out like um, a whoop. It started out with this woo, and but then it 
went into the, I guess you'd call it the classic Bigfoot scream. Yeah. Um, best way I can describe it is if you ever seen Finding Bigfoot and you heard Bobo do his call, it was kind of like that, only probably about 15 to 20 times louder and had the added, you could feel it. You could almost feel the ground vibrating underneath the, you as well when that's going on no i i mean i no yeah. i mean i could feel it i mean it was it was like when um have you ever one of those cars with those oh, yeah. bass come yeah. up to you and you yeah. just feel it oh, yeah. thumping in your chest yeah that's how this was right. not the whoop part not the woo how it started but when it got into that that long, scream long or man. howl or whatever um, you want to call it yeah. All of a sudden, it, it just it just hit me, and you could just feel it penetrating all oh, yeah. the way through you. Uh, anyway, so the guys heard that. They come, they finally get there, and everything goes silent on the other side of the lake. Uh, and they're like, man, we thought we could hear these knocks and yells and stuff, but we weren't sure. Until that, those last three and that big yell, what what happened? Well, when they started asking me those questions, I remember back to when I'm seven years old, talking to my family. I'm also remembering that these guys are not exactly the nice. Well, they they were nice guys. Right. They were great guys. Uh, that's why I was hanging out with them. But sometimes they weren't the brightest people with some of the stuff they did because they almost got us into a fight on the way up there with some <laughs> cowboys <laughs> and a truck stop. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story because he met this one guy, one of the guys in our group, these cowboys came in. We were eating lunch trying to get up to Mystic. These cowboys come in for lunch, probably off the range or whatever. One of them, tall, lanky guy, had these big California rowels, still had his spurs on. One of the guys in my group goes, I wonder if we tip him backwards, we can roll him back out the door on those things. <laughs> I just moved to another table. I go, Man. I ain't with you guys, no way. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, I remember all this. I remember what happened with my uncle in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember all this. I remember what happened with my uncle and my cousins. And... I was like, I ain't going to tell good. these guys nothing about what I think or what was happening. I just said, must was, have been adrenaline. Was the bear <laughs> still in the vicinity when all this is going on? Well, I, I'm <laughs> guessing it okay. was, but one, I don't think bears tree knock, and plus no, they that don't. happened like I was, I wasn't oh, saying for at that least purpose. two or three yeah. days earlier. Yeah, didn't you say that bear, that was a few days earlier? Yeah, yeah, the the bear would have, so. I mean, this is like, we're walking out on like Friday or Saturday, so the bear would have been on okay. like Tuesday okay. or Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so so you've got, you've got the situation when you were seven, the confirmation from your grandfather, Troy, then the situation in Montana when you're 14, and, and that you dealt with. And then let's fast forward to, um, as an adult, you you said you're working for the for the with the conservation department. Is, is it that Iowa conservation? Yeah, back then it was still it wasn't the DNR like right. it is now. It was still the old Iowa okay. Conservation Commission. Okay. But um, I didn't really have anything Bigfoot related happen there. But the reason I brought it up was the fact that um, what what I'm saying is. Um, while yes, when I had those encounters, I was comfortable in the woods. I'd been in the woods literally my whole life, but then I started doing jobs where I got out and I wasn't seeing them on TV. I wasn't right. seeing them in zoo. I was actually seeing bears, moose, you know, you, you name it. I was actually seeing it in the wild for whatever reason. So that's why I can so confidently now come back. I mean, I, I was I was confident back right. then, but now that's why I can so much more confidently come back and say, no, this was 
not a misidentification. No, this was, this is what and with it was. The, and with <laughs> all the information that is out there now, it almost just confirms exactly what you were dealing with back then as well. Oh, yeah, especially Montana, because now, now I know about tree knocks and right. all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, there there was none of that. I mean, you you maybe now, by then, you, you were getting into the later stuff. People were starting to take it a little bit more seriously. So now, now the stuff that I did know wasn't so much tongue-in-cheek. I didn't know people like uh, Jeff Melbrum was out there and writing books. I didn't know, I, but I was finally hearing about these guys and Grover Krantz and those yes. guys. I didn't know they had books. I didn't have those books. I do now. <laughs> um, but my point is, is um, no, you're absolutely right. It, it was magazine articles. It was the few documentaries that would be played on TV. Um, but now we have all of this stuff like, well, what we're doing tonight? What we're doing uh, tonight? Bigfoot side stuff. And, like that. and there are several other, several other similar type programs out there as well. Uh, some are very good. Um, yeah, and and several books. Several books. The the TV shows. Some of the some of the shows are some are better than others. But there, but a lot of information is out there. A lot of Facebook pages have now popped up. We talk about. We talk about the SEMO Bigfoot encrypted research page that, that I'm affiliated with, SEMO uh, for Southeast Missouri. But there's there's several others that are very kind to our program and, and want us to share our program with their Facebook people as well. Uh, and if I started naming them, I'd leave some out, but they, they know who they are. Um, so it gets the information out to a lot of people, a, a lot of people. Now, um, you mentioned that now anytime you're out, you're looking. What are some things that maybe you notice in the woods, signs that you just ignored in the past? Anything you can think of on that? Um, there, I definitely, usually I come across older ones. I don't think... I'm not going to say they're not in this area anymore. In fact, um, I have done a little bit of investigating and just uh, a couple of years ago, um, a lady, and I can't remember what town she was in now, but I drove all the way out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, just last year, um, about this time last year, a lady uh, that I work with, but she lives out in one of the smaller towns, um, told me that she heard some really strange whistles and whoops and stuff like that near her house because she lives at the edge of town, at the edge of this town. So I actually drove out to do some investigating. I couldn't, I couldn't get into some of the places where she said she heard them because it was all private property. Right. But if, if the Sasquatch do still come down through here, while it's a ways off from where the river is. I could see where they might still come that way because there is this creek, and I can't remember the name of it, it runs all the way from way up north, all the way down. And there's just, while it's dotted with small towns, most of it is private farmland, right. so they're not going yeah, to be yeah, disturbed. Really and there's the private temper all over the place. Invitation. Yeah. So, but as far as getting back to your original question, um, I now kind of have an idea of what to look for as far as tree structures. Um, in fact, uh, a couple of years ago, I was out at one of the county parks and uh, in two different parts of the park, I was hiking around and I seen tree breaks and uh, they were older ones. But they were tree breaks nonetheless. I mean, they were roughly about um, six to seven feet up. And it was a snap. And you could tell it was a snap. And it wasn't from, it wouldn't have been like from Snow Wade right. or anything like that. And 
it, it was also individual ones. There, there was no other, there was no other pushovers, no other breaks, no other nothing of all the trees that were around them. And I made note. Uh, the first one I thought, well, okay, that's interesting. And uh, by now I do know about tree breaks and stuff, so I'm like, well, that's interesting. And then I'm walking around. I'm a, at a totally different part of the park. And I'm off trail, and I come across another one. Again, about six, seven feet off, it snapped. But this one I took note of, and I actually took a compass bearing off of it. And then I literally walked all the way back to the other side of the park to the first one that I found. Turns out that both of these were snapped and pointed in the same degree same direction within a few degrees of each other that's interesting and well and here's the real interesting part both of those breaks are pointing to the river yeah. <laughs> and, and that's a consensus among that's researchers that a lot of those point toward the water they point toward the water um yeah you know, I've, I've heard that from several different people um the um very interesting. So, so what's on the horizon for you, Troy, as far as research is concerned? Um, well, uh, my wife, this is my second wife. Uh, she's a lot more in tune to a lot more, um, uh, accepting of this, uh, very interested in it. And, uh, so we're actually trying to start our own little group. She is currently in uh, Arizona because she's down helping to take care of her mom. And we'd always, my family for the most part, other than some kids and some scattered cousins, are gone. They, they've, they've passed. So, but her most of her family's still alive, but they're down in Arizona. So my plan is um, the last two kids, youngest kids, are getting ready to graduate. So my plan is within the next, hopefully, 12 to 18 months to actually move to Arizona. But me and my wife, we plan to, uh, especially once we're back together and back together full time, uh, we plan on uh, going out, doing some research. But most of our stuff's uh, because of where her family live. I'm going to start looking for the muggy on monsters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but we're actually interested. Uh, and that's one reason why I, I joined the Bigfoot group that I did, right. how you and I right. met Mike was because they not only talk about Bigfoot Sasquatch, but also other cryptids. And I have an interest in all of it. Um, so, you know, I'll admit Bigfoot, Sasquatch, because of my personal experience, kind of comes to the forefront, and I'll look at those a little faster and a little bit harder. But, yeah, I'm interested in all of it, and I'm hoping, uh, good Lord willing, that uh, my health stays to the point where me and my wife can do some traveling and just do some investigating, um, go to some conferences, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, when we can, uh, I would love. Um, you and you and I, we were talking. I've had a couple of experiences where I'm not going to say it was Bigfoot, but it was definitely in some how do they put it, squatchy right. areas. Um, uh, but it could have been a bear, it could have been a cougar. But I'll be honest with you, um, depending on what the border situation turns into. I've got a couple spots in Canada where I used to go quite a bit. If I can get back in there, I'd love to go do some investigating up in there again. Um, definitely want to go to this one place in uh, Colorado again, um, where I had the experience of something was paralleling me. Could have been a cat. There were cat warnings up when we were up there, but it could have been something else because um, I've since checked some on online databases where that post sightings right. and stuff and there were there were some 
possible sightings not too far from that particular location. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely, long, long as I have my health, um, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm starting to take it a little bit more seriously, but I'm also getting ready to retire, retire. So, uh, I'm going to have a lot more time. So as long as my health holds out, uh, I'm not a city person. I'm going to be out in the woods anyway, so might as well look for look for <laughs> well, the big guys hope, while I can. <laughs> let's hope that circumstances can get you and your wife back together and get you guys out doing something together because it's a lot of fun to just get out there oh, yeah. and explore the things that are out there um, that a lot of people think are unknown, but there's there's and there's more than just Bigfoot out there, as you mentioned. Um, I think the page we got together on was uh, the the Bigfoot Believers and Other Creatures page, which is run by Daryl Denton out of the Nashville. I think it said cryptids, but yeah, yeah, cryptids, yeah, but yeah, it's Bigfoot by the cryptids or whatever, the, yeah, out of the uh, Nashville area, and. Um, and he it's a great page, by the way, if you're looking for a Facebook group to get a hold of that uh, just doesn't put up with a lot of nonsense and kind of covers all the bases. Um, that's one we can recommend. But the um, but yeah, that's that's um, hopefully hopefully you can get to where you can do that. Becky's in a situation exciting. where she can't get out. So much yeah, right well, and like I said, uh, family and kids still being involved and not graduated yet. Fortunately for me, mine are graduated and are adults, so I I have time these last three years to get out where I didn't before that either. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm down to one. So once I get her graduated, then I'll be You're getting close. I'm getting close, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a great show, Troy, and 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 even though you may not be a household name in the world of Bigfoot research. You've got your personal encounters and folks like to hear about that. Um, and, and starting at seven years old, uh, incredible. I, I just, it's like, they let you go out and camp out by yourself at seven years old in the woods. That's, that's, that's <laughs> unbelievable. But that there was a different time back in the early seventies. You could, you, you did things like that. Oh yeah, it was you know that back in the early seventies. That was when some of this weirdness was just starting. But for the most part, um, especially in Iowa, you know, the Midwest, we we were past where we left the doors unlocked. We did lock the doors, but we could still feel re- relatively safe on our own property. And it wasn't like Grandpa just tossed right. me out there. I mean. He'd taken me camping. He'd showed me how to do stuff. And by the time I was seven, he trusted me enough to, as long as I stayed on the farm in that right. timber, then he would let me do it. And that's what happened. And I'm just so glad that, I'm just so glad that Grandpa was there because I, I don't know what would have happened, to be honest with you, uh, the way the guys were laughing at me, especially my own dad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if if Grandpa hadn't have been there, I I don't know. Well, what you just happened. don't know how but, you're. Uh, if somebody doesn't pull you aside and, and tell you about that, and and um, you just you just don't know. I mean, I've not even you know. I'm an adult, uh, well into my adult years. Becky, the same thing, uh, and and we'll hear it from people from time to time. You know, some of the ridicule or some of the doubt, but we're mature enough. To just go. I don't really care what you think. I know, you know, we, we know what we're doing. We're not making this stuff up. Yeah, and I'm, but, I'm at that point now seven, too. I, it's like I don't seven, care. I know what I see. Grandpa was around <laughs> to help you out with that at age seven because that you don't know where that would go from there if it didn't. But Troy, I tell you what, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun getting to know you and talk to you and hear about these experiences. But um, it, it had a great time with it. Uh, Becky, give you a final word, and we'll wrap it up. Yes. Thank you, Troy. I've enjoyed listening to your experiences and having you share with us tonight. And I'll be excited to hear more when you go out with your wife and good luck to you. Well, okay. Yeah. I, and thanks yeah. for having me, oh, man. I really enjoyed it. I, I was surprised when you asked me to be on the show, but yeah, no, thank you. It's, it's been a blast. You know, <laughs> people, this is what they want to hear. They want to hear real people 
experiences and especially you, you know they, they want to hear that and they want to hear from folks like you so if you've had an experience like troy has and you haven't shared it yet hook us up understanding bigfoot at gmail.com folks we're going to go ahead and wrap it up thanks again troy becky um we'll see you guys next time on understanding bigfoot mm-hmm.